Hey there, music fans. It's Ken the Metal Professor. I'm the host of Mostly Metal, a heavy metal, mostly, radio show on WVLP in Valparaiso, Indiana. I just finished putting together my show for broadcast later this week, and I figured as long as my mind was on the music, I'd go ahead and make the video that goes along with it. I've been doing that recently where I've been playing, you know, top 10 favorite songs by this band or that band on my show, and then also having a video where I discuss the list. And I'll be doing that here for the Swedish power metal band Nocturnal Rights. Today's Mother's Day. I'm down here in Metal Professor's music basement. All is good, though. Uh, my wife is upstairs laying around in her pajamas watching reruns of ER after we filled her up with breakfast in bed. So she's got food coma, and I had to put my show together for this week, so what the heck. The weather's crappy. We can't be outside. Hope you're all doing well, apart from being rained on if you're near me, or looks like anywhere in the Midwest, but I need to quit talking about the weather and start talking about nocturnal rights. Now, they have uh, nine studio albums, so I will put my ranking of the albums and my top ten favorite songs in this same video. And I'm going to cheat on the ranking of the albums. This is my grabbing order, which one am I least likely to most likely to want to listen to when it's time to listen to Nocturnal Rights. I just discovered yesterday about a CD of theirs that I didn't know existed. Uh, I started getting into Nocturnal Rights uh, at around the time of Grand Illusion, so back in the early to mid 2000 aughts, right? Got to see them in concert a couple of times, really dug it. I investigated what they had and backtracked a little bit to get, you know, New World Messiah and Shadowland and Afterlife, the discs that Johnny Lindquist was, it was and is vocalist on. And then, you know, I've been buying the new ones since then. And I thought I was doing pretty good until I went to double check and yesterday discovered that they had a release back in 1995 called In a Time of Blood and Fire, which I did not know existed. And so even though I'm ranking my favorite discs, I'm only ranking eight of nine because I haven't heard that one. I poked around just a little bit. Uh, it's not available like for, uh, for digital download on Amazon, as far as I can tell. There are used copies for like hundreds of dollars. Uh, it's, not, it's the one disc of theirs that's not on Spotify, which is another reason why I can't find it. So I haven't heard it yet. Um, you know, if I can get to it, relatively inexpensively i will certainly do so but i'm not uh, i'm not on the trail enough to start spending you know 50 100 dollars for a copy of it um and i don't uh i don't pirate stuff so i'm not going to go that route either so we'll see if i ever get my hands on it but i'm guessing that since it's been out of print for so long and uh, i've never heard of it and i you know i guess as far as i know i didn't hear them play any songs from it in concert my guess is that it might have been kind of low in my rankings anyway, who knows? But otherwise, uh, let's get started. I always like to have, I don't know if I like to, but I usually have an oddball pick in my rankings and I'm going to start right off with it. So I'm going to put uh, my least favorite of theirs. So number one in my list of eight CDs from the bottom up. Afterlife from 2000. So this was the first album that Johnny Lindquist took over on vocals, and I just it's it's got good songs on it. My favorite is Wake Up Dead, uh, but it's just to me it's a little bit too much of the wham 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 type of power metal, and it doesn't have the catchy choruses that I've come to expect from Nocturnal Rites on a lot of their other albums. Right, I go for the melodic stuff the choruses i just you know i can deal with chugga chugga wham wham power metal but of all the albums nocturnal rights has to me this is the one that has you know it's a little slower paced at times it has a little too much of the just the wham 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 drumming whereas in other other records they have to me the drumming is a little more subtle uh, than it is on a lot of afterlife but i'm not a drummer what do i know that's just how i describe it next up Tales of Mystery and Imagination. Now, not to be confused with the Alan Parsons album of the same name. This is from 1998. Anders Zacherson is doing vocals on this one. Um, Ring of Steel, Lost in Time, Change the World are my favorite tracks off of it. Um, 
I thought this was their first until I discovered in a time of blood and fire. And to me, having thought it was their first, I was like, this is a pretty good album for a first album. Um, it's got, you know, it's got the power metal stuff, but it does have catchy choruses and a lot of variety on the album, which I appreciate. And then coming in right after that would be the Sacred Talisman from 1999. Also with, um, I have my, my list over here, Anders Zachrison uh, doing vocals there. Um, as long as I'm looking at my the list that's up, you know, per Nilsson on guitar is currently Frederick Manberg also on guitar is Nils Erickson on bass, Ovi Lingvall on drums. Uh, per Nilsson is a recent addition to the band. It looks like uh, Christopher Rorland and Michael Soderstrom had been doing guitars before that. Um, I do remember their bass player, uh, I guess Nils, uh, was a hell of a lot of fun to watch live. He just he had a smile on his face the entire time he was playing. And yes, you are allowed to smile in metal. And in fact, I prefer it because I like my I like my metal catchy and uplifting. Um, the other thing I'll say about the Sacred Talisman, I mean, I like the songs Destiny Calls and Free at Last, Hold On to the Flame, The King's Command, which is labeled on Spotify as The Ring's Command for some reason. Um, I was listening to that album a lot recently, trying to decide where it would go in the list, and I started thinking, you know, this vocalist sounds awfully familiar, and not just because he sang on the other album. There's a band called Gallo Glass that has two CDs, and I really like Gallo Glass. They apparently weren't around for a long time, and I don't think that they've released anything recently. The vocals on the Sacred Talisman reminded me so much of the vocals on Gallo Glass, but it isn't the same guy. But what I will say is if you do like Nocturnal Rites and you do dig the, especially the older CDs like the Sacred Talisman, and you have not heard Gallo Glass, go check them out. There's only two CDs there to find. Um, so go do it. It's good stuff. But Nocturnal Rites. Okay. Uh, Afterlife, Tales of Mystery and Imagination, The Sacred Talisman, and then back to back to Johnny Lindquist, Shadowland from 2002. The title track is great, Eyes of the Dead, Faceless God and the Watcher, all good stuff. Uh, Shadowland to me is getting into the, there's a, a run of like three or four albums where Shadowland was, the accelerator was starting to get pressed down a little bit to launch them into what I think of as their, you know, their golden years. In my list of preference after Shadowland comes Phoenix. That's their most recent from 2007. They put it out after a 10 year hiatus. It's very, very, very good stuff. Uh, Before We Waste Away and Repent My Sins, A Song For You, um, The Ghost Inside Me, Welcome to the End is spectacular. Even the bonus track on it called Used To Be God is really, really good. So lots of good tracks on Phoenix. The reason it's not higher, I mean, there's only three more to go, but the reason it's not higher is that it kind of comes from the same musical hatchery as the three albums that came before it, even after that 10-year hiatus. So once you get to know you know, um, the, the albums that came before it, which I'm about to name, you kind of know exactly what the songs on Phoenix are going to sound like. Um, in fact, some of them you could switch the positions on the albums and probably not even notice. Um, and so Phoenix is very, very strong, but it was preceded by stuff that was a little bit stronger and of the same exact um, style. So I put it a little bit farther down. Coming into the top three, the very strong three, New World Messiah from 2004, the title track, Avalon is Wonderful, Breakaway, One Nation. When I was putting together my top 10 songs list, which I'll go through next, um, pretty much every one of those songs I just mentioned off of New World Messiah was were candidates to be in that list. Um, not all of them made it, but they are certainly hovering it around, you know, they're all bunched up at the starting line at 10.5. Two more to go. Next up is The Eighth Sin from 2007. Call Out to the World, Never Again, Not Like You, um, Till I Come Alive. I mean, these are just energetic, short and sweet, with pounding bass and 
sing-along choruses um, just gets in your head and doesn't go away great for riding a bike riding a, driving a car uh, walking on a treadmill running lifting weights you know whatever you want to do to get yourself active mowing the lawn if you want to keep yourself focused and bob it's it's perfect for that uh, and then my favorite Nocturnal Right C is Grand Illusion from 2005 for exactly the same reason as the 8 Sin. And in fact, those two, they're neck and neck numbers 1 and 1.5, really. Um, you know, flip a coin as to which one's 2 and which. Okay, that's not. I, I would weight that coin a little bit still toward Grand Illusion from 2005. Just because the opening several tracks of Grand Illusion, they just start and grab a hold of you and they do not let up for like four or five songs. Fools Never Die, Never Trust, Still Alive, Something Undefined, Never Ending, Deliverance is a kind of a slower tempo song, but it just it gets in your ear and doesn't let go. Um, I'm starting to, you know, I'm starting to hear it now in my head as I'm talking about it. Just very, very memorable, short, to the point, uplifting, happy power metal songs. So if you like that kind of thing and you want to sing along and and have your spirits lifted as you're listening to music the grand illusion by nocturnal rights will not uh, will not lead you astray all right so again my ranking in preference of which ones i'm going to le be least likely to most likely like likely to grab when listening to nocturnal rights first of all the ghost cd that i don't have and only found about yesterday in a time of blood and fire. I actually don't know where that would go in my list. If I ever get a hold of this, I'll update. Um, but then from the bottom up, Afterlife, Tales of Mystery and Imagination, The Sacred Talisman, Shadowland, Phoenix, the newest one, New World Messiah, and then Neck and Neck, The Eighth Sin, and Best of the Best, Grand Illusion. Okay, cheers iced coffee for the win the starbucks near me are starting to open back up i've seen people in the drive through i've seen long lines at the drive through but i'm still getting by with just buying the the jug of starbucks iced coffee pre-made that's in the cooler section you know at grocery stores target whatever um, i'm going to leave the fine folks at starbucks alone for a couple more weeks before i start uh, heading over there I don't know whether the employees really enjoy being back at work or if they'd much rather be at home uh, staying a little safer. And so, you know, until things are a little bit better, I'm not going to be one of the people that's pressuring them to interact, even though it's hard to stay away from Starbucks. All right, my top 10 favorite Nocturnal Rights songs. There's not a whole lot to say individually about these because Nocturnal Rights has a very narrow bandwidth of style of music, right? It's just, it's melodic power metal. Um, the songs are all like three and a half to four and a half minutes long. There's no surprises to the structure. It's just a question of um, what the lyrics are almost and who the vocalist is. Um, Anders Zacherson, the vocalist on the first two or three discs, and then uh, <clears throat> and then Johnny Linkvist taking over after that. Um, and again, as I mentioned when I was doing my rankings, the very first CD I just learned about yesterday and I don't have it. So maybe there is a track in there that would sneak its way into this top 10. Um, this top 10 is made from their most recent eight CDs and not their very first one, which was called In a Time of Blood and Fire. Okay, uh, in this list of 10, there is a there's two groupings. The first five I'm going to mention, you know, maybe the ordering could change around and I wouldn't complain about it. Um, and then there's a, a very distinct demarcation to the top five songs. The top five songs to me are, I can cherry pick those out. This is one of my favorites. This is one of my favorites very, very easily. Uh, the other ones, you know, from 10 through 6, they're, they're kind of risen to the top of a soup of really, really, really good songs that I could reorder them. I might go pick a different one, you know, at some point. Like I mentioned, New World Messiah. There were several candidates for that disc for my top 10. Um, and one made it the other three or four you know they're hanging around at like 10.5 so it's it's all good stuff um, and going through this list of top 10 takes like 40 minutes right because their songs are so short and in fact one of the reasons i'm doing the show today is that uh, i prepared my 
show on WVLP, mostly metal for this week already. We pre-record right now because of what's going on. We don't go into the studio. And I did it early enough that I could make this video before the show airs. So if you listen to this before Wednesday, May 13th, and you're interested in listening to these 10 songs by Nocturnal Rights and a lot of other brand new music um, on my show, WVLP.org. Listen live Wednesday night, 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time the 13th or if not then then sunday the 17th sorry i said that wrong wednesday the 13th at 10 p.m u.s central time will be the first airing and then sunday night at 8 p.m u.s central time may 17th will be the rerun so you can go listen to these i don't embed the songs in these videos so that i you know don't get copyright problems um anyway I've talked way too long before I get to the list. Here's the list. But I can talk a lot ahead of time because the list isn't going to take that long. There's not a whole lot to say about these songs individually other than they're, they're just good stuff. Uh, number 10, Change the World off of Tales of Mystery and Imagination. Very often I find myself, if I come into a band and get used to one vocalist because I came in later in their lifetimes as a band, and then I go back and listen to the earlier albums that might maybe had a different vocalist. I tend to not like the original vocalist sometimes because they weren't as good. You know, other times just you get used to one person and you don't get accustomed to the other just as well. This is a band where I would have been perfectly happy if the original vocalist, Andrew Zacherson, stuck around. I don't know what their history is. I don't know why he left. Um, but he was good. I really dig his vocals. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you like his vocals and you haven't heard the band Gallo Glass, you should go check them out. It's not the same person, but they sound very, very similar. Uh, but anyway, number 10, Change the World Off of Tales of Mystery and Imagination. And number 9, Hold On to the Flame Off of the Sacred Talisman, both early enough to have that first vocalist. Number 8 for me will be Break Away Off of New World Messiah, um, like Avalon was also a candidate off of that CD to get into this set, but it didn't quite make it. Number 10987, Birth of Chaos, off of Shadowland. This was Johnny Linquist's first album with the band. And then at number six, The King's Command, or The Ring's Command, if you go by Spotify, off of The Sacred Talisman. That's another one from uh, Anders, the first vocalist. Uh, just really, really good stuff. And again, all five of those, they could be interchanged. They could be traded out for other really good tracks on some of the albums. They're all three and a half to four and a half minutes long. They all have pounding bass, drumming, great vocals, um, uplifting, happy. Well, I don't know about happy. I mean, maybe the lyrics are depressing, but it's performed in an uplifting way. Really good for exercising and keeping yourself motivated putting it on when you're you know working in the kitchen anything like that okay and then there's a line in my list not literally but because the top five are definitely the top five um, there none of the six through ten would creep up on any of these songs in the next five I'm gonna give you starting with uh, my number five favorite is till I come alive off of the eighth sin great chorus on that uh, something Undefined off of The Grand Illusion. Now that one sounds, that's a different beast than the other songs. It's still heavy, it's still power metal, it's just the, the structure of the chorus and the way it sounds is just different. I don't know how to describe it other than that song stands out as being very distinct uh, on The Grand Illusion and even its neighbor, The Eighth Sin. My top three then, uh, coming in at number three, Never Again off of The Eighth Sin, again. It's the same reason as the others, just totally uplifting music that will get you out of whatever funk you happen to be in. Welcome to the end off of their latest disc, Phoenix. Now that closes the disc. It's a, again like uh, something undefined. It's a slightly different bird in terms of um, how the chorus fits in with the rest of the song and the way it's presented, but it still is the, fits the overall template, but it's very distinct as far as that album goes. And my favorite Nocturnal Rights song, and one of my favorite power metal songs, 
from anybody is still alive off of Grand Illusion. Um, that song just gives me goosebumps. I can listen to it over and over again. Uh, especially the, the end towards the end of the song when the chorus is coming around and it changes up a little bit and the vocals change slightly and Johnny's singing over everything. Uh, just gives me gives me goosebumps and that's what it's all about. So that's my top 10 favorite songs by Nocturnal Rights. Again, if you hear this video before Wednesday the 13th and you want to listen to these 10 songs uh, without having to go out and build a playlist yourself, just tune in to WVLP.org Wednesday the 13th at 10 p.m. U.S. Central Time and you'll get to hear these songs. The show lasts two hours. These 10 will close out the show, so give it about an hour and a half or less of new music and then um, these 10 songs in fact i'm gonna i'm gonna plug plug this show a little bit better i'm gonna, I'm gonna pause okay i'm back the reason i paused was to switch the screen heck as long as i'm shamelessly plugging my actual show uh let me just i'll just tell you just you can get a sense of what goes on on mostly metal so I mentioned I'm going to play my top 10 favorite Nocturnal Rights tracks. The show's two hours long. For 10 Nocturnal Rights songs, you only need about 40 minutes. So the first hour and 20 minutes of the show will be uh, mostly new music from lots of different bands that we get access to at, at the station as this music comes down the pipe. Um, like the new Haken track, Prosthetic, I'm leading off with that. I got some new Nightwish. <laughs> Judicator, which is a band I'd never heard of before. Turns out to be a fun power metal band. I'm going to play that. The New Testament's in there. God, that's good stuff. Mike LaPond, his band Mike LaPond's Silent Assassin. I got a track from them, um, which reminds me my next video to go along with next week's show, Mostly Metal. I'll be doing my top 10 Symphony X tunes, which very well could take up my entire two-hour show. Um, other new stuff from Beyond the Black, Within Temptation, I'm also throwing in new Vader and Nagelfar, so it's not always just all power metal. Death metal and black metal make an appearance too. And then I also play some older, the Sonata Arctica, um, you know, older on their being on their most recent album, but older being that it's 2020 and this music came out several years ago, as opposed to all this other stuff which is coming out right now. And then all those nocturnal rights tunes. So that's the kind of stuff I play on the show. If you're ever interested, uh, feel free to check it out again, wvlp.org. And my show is Wednesdays, 8 p.m. U.S. There I go mixing them up again. Wednesdays at 10 p.m. U.S. Central replay on Sunday at 8 p.m. The reason I'm switching them is that when I do live, I'm doing Sunday as the original show and Wednesday as the rebroadcast. But during all this COVID stuff while the studio is down and I'm pre-recording, it just turns out that it's easier to make the show so that Wednesday is the first one and then Sunday is the replay. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening to me blab on about nocturnal rights and feel free to give the show a try. And next video, probably about six days from now, seven days from now, will be my ranking and top 10 for Symphony X.